Hi friends, welcome to another edition of Quick Tip Videos brought to you by DataPlatformCentral.com. In this edition of Quick Tip Videos, we can see one of the latest enhancements in Azure Data Factory, which is the Inline XML Connector. Inline XML Connector enables us to connect to XML documents which are stored inside Azure Blob Storage or Azure Data Lake. The inline XML connector will be available as an option when you create a linked service to Azure Blob Storage or to an Azure Data Lake from inside a copy script or from a mapping data flow. Now in this demo, we'll see how inline XML connector can be utilized to transfer data from an existing XML document to an Azure SQL database by utilizing the copy activity and also the data flow task which is available within Azure Data Factory. For the sake of this demo, we are going to take a simple XML document with some subscriber details. We will be storing this XML document inside an Azure Blob Storage and then using a copy script to copy the data from this document to Azure SQL database. We will also see an alternate approach where we will be using the Azure Blob Storage as a source inside a mapping data flow and transfer the data from this document to Azure SQL database. Let's quickly go to Azure portal and start creating the data factory package for copying the data from Azure Blob Storage to Azure SQL Database. We need to select the copy data option from the home page of Azure Data Factory for start creating the copy script. The first page will give you the overview page where you have to fill in the name for the task. So let's name this XML Data Transfer. Click on next and it will ask you to create a linked service to your source. We need to create a linked service to our XML document here. Since our XML document is stored inside Azure Blob Storage, we will be creating a linked service to Azure Blob Storage. Inside that, you need to select the Azure subscription under which the Blob Storage is created and you need to create the storage name in case there are multiple storages all the names will be listed click on test connection to make sure that you are able to connect to the azure blob storage successfully once it is success click on create to create the linked service once the linked service is created select the linked service and click on next in the file or folder property, browse to the file or the folder where your XML file is present. So in this case, we have the folder called demo files, which contains the XML file. So select the folder or you can also select the file. If you're selecting the folder, if there are multiple files, it will try to process the files one by one. In case it's a single file and you just want to process that single file, you can also go one level beyond and select the file directly. For the sake of this demo, I am going to directly select the folder name. Click on choose. Then click on next. And it will ask for the file format. This is where you need to select XML format so that it utilizes the XML inline connector on the background. Automatically you would be provided with a preview of the file structure. If you compare this to the, the original source data you can see that it shows the same data inside. But here the data will be shown like a JSON format. Click on next and then it will ask you to create a linked service to your destination. In this case, your destination is an Azure SQL database. So click on create new connection 
and we need to select from the options Azure SQL database. Click on continue and it will ask you to select your subscription. Once the subscription is selected, it will list all Azure SQL servers available inside. You need to select the SQL server instance to which you need to transfer the data. Then you also need to select the database to which the data has to be transferred. Then you have to fill in the username and also the password. You can get this information from the overview page of your Azure SQL Server. So you can copy the information from there onto the screen. Enter the username and also the password as you have given in your Azure SQL database. Click on Test Connection. Assuming your credentials are correct, it will promptly connect to your instance and show a connection successful message. Then click on Create to create the linked service. Once the link service gets connected, select the link service and click on next. Now you need to select the table to which you want to transfer. In this case, I am going to choose dbo.subscribers as the table. Click on next. Now you need to fix the mappings. By default, copy activity has the ability to get the column details from your JSON document and map it to the corresponding columns created in your table. Whichever columns are mapping by their names, the mapping will automatically get created. Wherever there is a difference in the names between the columns, it will not be able to map it. So you have to manually provide the mapping in that stage. Unless all columns are mapped, it will not let you go to the next screen. The reason why it prompts you with that error is because there is one column in this case which is not mapped. The reason being the name of the column in the table is having a different case as compared to the field name inside your JSON document. As Azure is case sensitive, you also need to ensure that the casing of the names are same between the elements coming from the XML document to the column that you create inside your table. So now that you have all mapped all the columns inside the table, the error has gone and you, are, you can now proceed. Before you click next, make sure you check the collection reference checkbox to ensure that the entire collection of data gets transferred from your source XML document to your table. Click on next. And it will ask you for the options of data consistency, fault tolerance, etc. If you want to leave it by default, click on next again. And it will give you an overview of the changes that you have done inside. Click on next. And it will automatically start validating your copy script and also the create the data sets, the corresponding pipelines and it's, it will start running the pipelines. In every stage of these steps, you will be shown the result of the step by using the green tick. Once all the green ticks are done, it will automatically start executing the pipeline on the background. Clicking on the monitoring button will take you to the monitor screen where you can see the execution status of your CopyScript package. As seen from the screen, your CopyScript package has successfully executed. Now it's time for you to check the result. For this purpose, through the Azure portal, connect to your Azure SQL database. In the overview screen of your Azure portal, you can see an option called Query Editor, which is a client interface that can be used to connect to your Azure SQL database. Make sure you enter your username and password that you created during the setting up of your Azure SQL database. Once you enter the correct credentials, it will take you inside the database and you can expand the table views to see all the tables that are existing inside. Since our destination is dbo.subscribers, you can click on the ellipses next to the subscribers and click on select top 10 2000 rows and you will be provided with the query results indicating that 
all the data has been successfully transferred to your Azure SQL database table. Now let's see how the same requirement can be achieved using a mapping data flow. For that, click on the edit button to go to the edit package mode of your Azure data factory. Click on the plus sign to create a new package and select data flow. Make sure you select mapping data flow because that is what we are going to create. Click on mapping data flow and click on OK and it will provide you with a blank screen for creating a mapping data flow. First step in creating a mapping data flow is to add a source. Now we are going to add a source task to connect to the link service which you have already created to connect to the XML document which is inside your Azure blob storage. Click on add source to add the source task. In this task you need to map to the link service that you have created to connect to the XML document. Once you map it, just click on test connection to make sure that the task is able to connect to the link service. Once the connection is successful, you can go to the source options and check the folder and also make sure you add a column for getting your file name. Once this is done, come to the projection tab and click on import projection to make sure that you are able to see the schema from the XML document imported correctly. Once you see that the schema is correctly imported, you can go to the inspect screen and make sure that you are having all the required columns in the output stream. The columns consist of all the columns which are coming from your XML document and also the file name column which contains the name of the file. Once you are happy with the output stream, you can click on the plus icon next to the source to create the flatten task which is used for flattening the data from your XML document onto relational format. If you compare this to the case of copy script, the copy wizard automatically does this flattening for you. So in this case, you need to go ahead and add a flatten task to the end of your source task. It will automatically get mapped to the output stream of your source and you need to give an option to map to the level from which the data wants to be flattened out. Once you have done the mapping, click on the reset button near to input column so that it automatically refreshes and takes all the columns available from the XML document. Once you see that the columns are correctly mapped to the output stream, you can just go to the inspect and see the number of columns available in your output stream. Once you are happy with that, you can again go ahead and click on the plus screen. This time you are going to attach a sync task to the end of this flattened task and the sync task will be connecting to your existing linked service which you have connected to your Azure SQL database. So go to the dataset and select the linked service for connecting to your Azure dataset and click on test connection. Once the connection is successful. You can go to the mapping tab and check. By default, auto mapping would be set to true, which means that all the columns from your source stream would be automatically mapped to your destination stream based on the name of the columns. If the columns are of the same name and the same case, the mapping should be fine. If you want to review the mapping, you can disable this property and it will see the mappings created by the system based on the column name. Just go to the inspect and ensure that all the columns are available in your output stream. So once all of this is done and you are happy, now it's time for you to put it in a pipeline and execute this package. For the purpose, just click on validate first to make sure that there are no validate warnings. And once everything has been validated successfully, make sure you click on publish to publish the package. Now you can see 
this the available tasks inside the package and you can click publish the tasks should get published in a short while once the task is published you can now go back to pipeline add a new pipeline and include a data flow task inside it so when it asks for the existing data flow or a new data flow select the existing data flow option and map to the data flow that you have created now click on ok click on publish to publish the newly created data flow in the confirmation box click on publish and it will publish the data flow within a short while Once the publishing is completed, you can now go and start running the pipeline. For this purpose, go to add trigger option and click on trigger now. This will ask for the confirmation for triggering the pipeline. Click on OK. Once the trigger starts executing the pipeline, you can click on the monitor icon and go to the monitoring screen to monitor the execution status. After a while, once you see the status as succeeded, you can go and check the results by going to the Azure database inside the portal. Go to the Azure database overview screen and click on query editor which will ask you to enter the login credentials to login and see the database table. Enter your credential, click on OK and it will get you login to the Azure SQL database. Click on tables to expand the tables in the database and you can see your subscribers underscore DFT table listed. Click on the ellipsis next to the table and choose select top 1000 rows. It will start executing the code and you can see the results of your data export inside the table. As you see the entire data from your XML document will get transferred to the Azure SQL database table successfully. As you see from this quick demo, you can make use of the newly added inline XML connector available inside Azure Data Factory for transferring the data from my XML document which is stored in Azure Blob Storage using a simple copy script or a simple mapping data flow inside your Azure Data Factory package. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for getting quick tips like this. Wish you all a great day. Bye.